Hi, my name is Ray Reyes, and um, here's a testimony to show you how God not only gives us the things that we need, but sometimes He will bless you with something that you really, really want. And um, I just hope that this will motivate you and just show you that if you surrender wholeheartedly to the Lord, He will bless you 100%. God bless you. Hi, my name is Raymond Reyes, and this is my beautiful wife, Valerie Reyes. And we're the owners of Razor Modeling Inc. We wanted to share this uh, testimony with you guys um, just to show you what the Lord has done and what he's willing to do for not just us, but for pretty much everyone who believes in him and, and just follows what, what he entrusts you with. I guess I want to start off by saying that um, we started our business in 2000 and end of 2008, 2009, right after the crisis. And um, things went okay. Nothing, you know, not, nothing crazy, but um, a couple of years down the road, um, my wife calls me in the middle of the day and says, hey, um, I was praying and the Lord, the Lord spoke to me and um, we need to change the way that we're praying over our business. And I'm like, okay. And um, I said, okay. And this is middle of the day. And so I was kind of caught off guard. So I decided to just race home and um, she said to me, we need to pray that the Lord blesses our business so that we can be a blessing to others, not just so that he, you know, blesses our company, but more for the fact that so that we can bless other people and with employment, with whatever the Lord wants us to do with our finances. So I said, wow, you know, so we completely just focused on that and the Lord, the Lord answered. Yeah. He, I mean, it just, it was like instant, like, within days like we just just jobs started flowing in and and we just we just knew what we needed to do um and it was just like our focus was just to to be a blessing everywhere we could um so i want to super fast forward now because we're going to get pretty far forward now in 2000 and 2019 2019 i get an opportunity to uh to go quote a, a, a fairly, a very large job. Um, and it happened to be when I get, when, you know, I got the address, I wasn't aware of where I was going. I knew it was one of the largest commercial buildings in, in, in our area. And it happened to be a church. Now during this time, every job, you know, my, our motto, you know, had focused to where, you know, and I, and I said this a million times, I say to my guys, you know, I don't, say to many customers because we never try to use you know our faith in the lord as like a, a way to get a job but every job that we do our motto with our business is that we do it for the lord you know just the way the bible says when you're working for your masters that you do it as if you're doing for the lord and that that just helps us go above and beyond for everything that we have to do and i get to this building and it's a church and i'm standing right in front of this and it is a, it's a very large church and I'm like, wow, okay, yeah, figure this out. And the Holy Spirit, loud and clear, starts talking to me. And I don't know about you guys or anybody else, but when the Holy Spirit talks to me, he kind of talks like I talk, you know. And I hear, I hear him say, what are you going to do now? This is actually the house of the Lord. And I'm like, oh. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, um, <laughs> And not that I'm trying to avoid hearing him, but I'm like, this is a, this is a big deal. Like, and again, it's like, what are you going to do now? You're in the house, you're in the house of the Lord. You know, you say you work for the Lord. Now you're in my house. So, I'm, so now I'm, you know, I'm walking around this building and I'm like, so like, and, and, you know, we, we have donated paint jobs before. Um, when the Lord's put it in yeah, our hearts. Yeah, the Lord's put it in our hearts and it, and it ends up being something amazing because it's like literally like the Lord doing, doing his work and, and you know, and the Lord provided for us to do that. But here I am standing in front of a very large building. This, you know, this is a paint job that, that, you know, this we're talking $67,000 job. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, Oof. but I know that the, you know, we've learned and, it's, and my wife's helped me so much with this is like, the Lord won't, won't allow you to, to move up you know, if he can't trust you with more, if, you know, we always say it, if he can trust you with a little, he'll trust you with more. And, you know, he stretched us the times that we did donate a paint job for, for a home or something. But, 
Now it's like, this is a stretch. I'm like, I'm about to snap. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my goodness. Testing your faith. That's what yeah. So I get, I get home and, and we actually went out to eat. Um, we're at a pizzeria and, you know, we've been together since I was, you know, like 15 or 16 years old. So my wife knows me very well, probably more than anybody. And she could see that something's just going on. And she asked me, what's, what's the deal? What's, what's going on with you? I could see something. Your, your mind's not there. And, and so I tell her, I'm like, look, I want to go see the job. It's a church. It's massive. And um, I just keep hearing the Holy Spirit. Um, telling me that this is his house and I work for him now. And, and I know there's, there, there, you know, there, there's money and I know there's things that, 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 you know, the churches do and they work with, but at the same time, when the Holy Spirit spoke to me, you know, and I, and, and I was like, I got to listen, but my wife and I thank her so much. She said, if this is what the Lord and the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, we got to do it. We got to do it. We're going to figure a way. And when she says we can figure a way, it puts me at peace because <laughs> she does the finances. I don't. <laughs> So I said, all right, let's do it. And so we decided to do it. And um, it wasn't easy, but we did it. Um, and So we donated the job, um, but at cost. So without getting into too many details. Yeah, yeah. yeah we yes. did have the opportunity to tell the pastoral staff yeah. um, after they had some other, other things going on with another portion of their church. You sat down and you told them. Yeah, and it was like, wow, it was, you know, I remember the, the, the pastor's wife, she cried, and it was just like, you know, because they, they had a big event coming up soon, it was a large anniversary, Yeah. and there was a couple of, you know, financial things going on there, and so it was like God's timing, you know, and and and, and so we, we went and we did it, and and it was amazing, and, you know, we, we kept from telling almost anybody, even most of our crew had no yeah, idea. Yeah, nobody we, we, knew. You know, because the glory is God's and I never yeah. want to come across like this is something I did. Look at us, you know, because it wasn't like I always tell everybody I'm like the least deserving human being. Um, but um, we share it now because we just want to motivate people to just know how God works. Because it was the beginning. Yes. Somewhat of a beginning. Yes. Yeah, so propelled us to your testimony. Yeah. Today. So we did the job and I, I'm honest, honest to the Lord. I mean our company really really excelled i mean we we started getting commercial jobs and i kept thinking oh they must know that we did this job that's how we got this other one i mean we're talking huge buildings and none of them ever had a clue so i knew that it was coming directly from yeah. the lord and so um fast forward a little further and i told the church i said look you know what we're doing this was the outside of the church i always told them what we're it's the church inside and outside is a church. So if you ever, if, if the inside calls for it, it's going to be the same deal because I want, I, you know, when God puts it in our hearts to bless, we want to do the whole thing. And so COVID hits and they had called us and they weren't asking for us to no. donate anything or anything. They were just saying, look, this is the only time our church will be empty. You know, we can't have anybody in here at the moment and we want to get the inside painted. And we did the same thing. We did it at we, cost. We did it at cost. Um, no profit for us. Um, and um, it was it was a it was probably the most amazing feeling to to see how the Lord had you know he he did it for us you know this wasn't easy but you know it's just a, just amazing feeling to give like that and around that same time um, I've always been into cars my whole life it's like just a crazy passion of mine anything I can especially fast I I try to make anything fast um, and uh, I kind of fell in love with with the, the Corvette stuff and all the you know the, the big muscle stuff the high horsepower stuff and I've you know built up some motors I, I use I use what what I have so you've got pickup trucks so I've got some pretty fast pickup trucks just from you know it's, it's what I have so it's, it's what I what I done but I've always always kind of wanted you know the sports car myself but never really you know put put time into like chasing after that and around that around that time um, GM puts out this, this drawing of this new model of this car. And I'm just like, when I see him, I'm like, wow. And it was just a drawing. And then not too far after they said, this will be their new model. It's like, just. You fell in love with the car. I was like, <laughs> and I'll never forget the moment I saw that car. And I, it's just a car. The story is not about the car. I just want to be clear there. But when I saw that car, I looked at my wife. And I said, the Lord's going to give me this car. 
I meant it. Like, I, I mean, kind of sad to say because I've always had faith in things, but I never had as much faith as when I said this. And when I mean the faith that I had was so strong, and I think part of, you know, having faith is, is having an action behind it. I actually bought some parts for this car, some accessories, well over a year ago, like a way before this car was even, you know, put out for the first model. And I'm, I put those things in my garage and I said, the day the Lord gives me this car, I'm going to put these things on it. So I had that much faith. I really believed it. And um, so during that time... Um, right in 2021, fast forward to 2021, and the Lord takes us uh, to a new church. And we yes. have the opportunity to again... Um, I won't say be tested by the Lord, but he gives us the opportunity to sew another job. Yes. And I remember saying to myself, you know, I did this for a church that I don't even, I don't even attend this church, but, um, I, I, how, how can I not do this for the church that now I call my own church? This time we're being um, spread a little bit thinner where it wasn't just that cost. It was donate the job everything. entirely. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Labor, materials, everything. everything. And no shortcutting. These yeah. jobs are just the way we would do it for any client with warranties, the whole nine yards. Rep and paint reps involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, you name it. Um, it was all it was all done. You know the way the way we would do any job, even more because this is for the Lord. Um, so we we were able to do that, and and the reason I think we were able to do that is because you know we what we did before. So now the Lord has brought us to another level where he, we're able to do this. Um, it's still not easy, but we're able to do it because. The Lord trusted us when we had little and we were willing to give it. So not too long after, you know, now this car is like, I'm like following it. I actually got on a page where of like people who own this car, a very few amount of people. And you have to like pass a test just to even get on, get, get on this group. So, and of course I knew every, I knew about more about this car than some, most of the owners and even the dealerships, just cause I followed it so much. I was able to get on there. And so I just, you know, followed it and, and, and I really believed the Lord was going to give me this car that we weren't, I wasn't even going to pay for it. Like, I don't know how he was going to do it. I don't know if somebody, I thought maybe somebody was going to hand me the keys or somebody was going to give me a hundred thousand dollars or whatever. Well, I just really believed in my heart. So every time I would see one on TV or see one, I'd be like, yep. So in December, the Lord's going to give it to me. December of 2021. Yes. Um, we had a conversation because your 40th birthday is coming up August yes. of this year, August of 2022. And I said, you know what? Let's, let's go order the car. She said it. So I was like, cause I was believing that the Lord was going to provide for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, are you serious? You know, cause I, I, I've learned to keep my priorities straight and you know, this is not a necessity at all. No. Um, but I'm like, okay, let's do it. You know, and these cars are, are, are ordered, special ordered. You have to practically build it online. <clears throat> and it's, you know, people are waiting up to two years sometimes for these vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, um, they're so sought after. So we figured, hey, we'll order it maybe a year from now. It'll come maybe by my 40th. That'll be fantastic. And, and so I'm literally, I'm looking at God. I'm like, all right, you got about a year. <laughs> I remember you were signing the, the, the purchase contract and you looked at me and you said, the Lord's going to give me this car. And I put every bell and whistle possible because <laughs> I was, I know the Lord's going to give me this car. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm going to, and knowing me, I mess, I do everything to cars. I don't want to touch this thing. And so, I said, amen. Yeah, so. And in my head, I'm thinking, um, is someone just going to come and give him the keys to the car? Are you going to win the lottery? Yeah, I don't even like, play the lottery, but I figured this? maybe I'll start playing or something. <laughs> And um, during that period of time, we get an opportunity to go and visit another church in um, Baltimore. Um, my brother-in-law, um, he's going to school up there. So we went to surprise him for his birthday. He had no idea. And we, we go to this church. Um, we, we met him. We picked him up. It was early Saturday morning. And his church was doing an outreach in Baltimore. And we decided, hey, let's pick him up mm -hmm. and we'll We'll, we'll join be, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll be part of this outreach. And we went to the church that morning and, and they were getting ready. And, you know, it was just a wonderful place. Amazing church. Um, Amazing and, people. 
Yeah. So they said, oh, you know, what do you, you know, you want to be help? You want to be part of my, like, I'll do what, whatever you want me to do. I'll do it. And <laughs> yeah. they put me as security. So I said, all right, cool. You know, I'll do, I'll do security, whatever you want me to do. And, um, so we went to this outreach and, um, it was in a really rough neighborhood. This part gets a little hard for me. I'm standing in this neighborhood. Very, very poor area. And I'm like, they put me at security. I was in the back of the crowd by this food truck. Um, the church had just acquired a, a truck, a box truck to do their donations for food and, and, and everything that they do with it. And um, I'm around people and I'm looking at everybody. I'm like, wow, this was me. I grew up in a neighborhood like this. And I'm just, I'm looking at how, you know, the conditions of the people and how hungry they were. And, you know, some people were there to just get a free meal or just to hopefully get their, their rent paid or something, yeah. but they were hungry. They, you know, they wanted the Lord. They wanted to see the Lord. And I'm looking at these people and I'm just like, man, I grew up in a neighborhood like this. And then I'm looking and I'm, and I'm, I'm seeing where God has taken me. I'm, I can see my house and, and the place that I live in it. And it just, it, it, it actually hurt. Um, I remember I had like 250 bucks in my pocket. I just, gave, I mean, I just started giving it to random people because I just, I, I couldn't take, I just, I was just so grateful and hum, I was humbled at the same time. I was so grateful for where the Lord had taken me. You know, I was not expected to go very far in my life, you know, at a young age. And I had fantastic family, great parents, but you know, I just became a little bit a product of the environment that I was in. And so I was probably the least person expected to, to do anything with their life. Um, and I just thank the Lord for that. And of course my wife for him bringing her into my life at the right time, because I, I really needed that. Um, she literally saved me through, through the Lord. And so I'm looking at these people and I'm, I'm, I'm like the most pitiful security guard. I'm literally crying the whole time. <laughs> And I'm looking at this box truck behind me and I'm like envisioning it with the church logos. I'm like, man, this truck would look so cool if it had like the church logo, like a wrap or something on it. And I don't know, it was just so stuck to my head. I just wanted to be a part of this so badly because I saw these, this was these people, this was me. And now I'm seeing where the Lord has taken me. So I just, you know, and it's so far away, so I can't be part of it, you know. And of course there's local outreaches where I'm at that I'm just so hungry to be a part of, or maybe even, do one ourselves one time, but, um, but anyway, the Lord put it in my heart to, uh, to ask the pastor of that church and said, Hey, have you guys thought of putting a wrap on this truck? And, and he was like, man, you know, we just talked about this. And he's showing me pictures on his phone. And I said, well, my wife and I, um, we would love to donate the wrap to you guys, you know, whatever it is, we, we want to take care of it. And, and he was really grateful. And, and, um, so we stayed in touch and, you know, fast forward a little bit and um, he's showing me the pictures and designs. And and so, you know, they sent us the total, you know, he said no pressure, whatever. But at the same time, I felt like, you know, when the Lord speaks, we've learned yeah. to just listen just no matter what it is. And so, you know, we sent the donation. Mm -hmm. And um, during that period of time, I get a I get a call back from the church, the first church, that big, big one I was talking about, the first church that we blessed that the Lord put it in our hearts to bless, um, because it's not us, it's, it's the Lord. Um, and they have a school and they're building a school and they they have a school, but they're expanding it. And so yeah. they have this huge project. It's like, you know, it's a modular building. It's about 13, 14,000 square feet. And they got it all budgeted out. And all of a sudden they get these, these crazy numbers, you know, these, I mean, they weren't too crazy. They were just large quotes that uh, higher than they were expecting to spend. So the pastor calls me and of course he's like, look, you know, they're not asking for anything for free. They're just trying to see if, if I know anybody. Where we help. Yeah, if we can or help. If we knew people that could help them. Yeah, so we can try to maybe lower the cost. And so, you know, these big, big numbers, um, electricals, you know, in the six figures just for electrical. Yeah. And, you know, we're talking flooring, 14,000 square feet, painting the whole building inside and out. We're building 12 bathrooms. I mean, the, it, is a, it is a very large project. And so I call all of the people in my network that, 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 you know, we do business with and that work for us. Um, and we were able to pretty much save the church 
upwards of about two hundred thousand um, dollars. I would say more. I would say about a quarter million to three. From the numbers yeah. that they had said that yeah. they were being quoted, and I'm like, you know, as at first I said, hey, that could be a good deal for all I know, or it could be not a good deal, and and it wasn't, you know, that it was a very bad deal. It's just that, you know, we just we just feel like this is this is a church, and so. We, we wanted to keep our word from day one as for like and help where we could yeah so we were able to save them a ridiculous amount of money yeah um and during that time you had called gm to follow up on the purchase order of the car yes yes and they were like no i'm getting no answers and i'm just i'm just curious i want to know you know i'm not really i'm not hoping it comes soon i just just wanting to know what's happening you know because of course I'm like, you know, God, you're going to buy me this car. So I'm <laughs> waiting for it to see how this is going to happen. And um, they... Which are usually taking a year or two. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the fastest I've seen was a year. Yeah. And, he, and then it's getting worse because of the limited amount of these vehicles. And so like three weeks before um, the car was ready, I called. And they, they were like, oh, you might not even get the year that you wanted. Because I remember in the day this thing was came out and drawn out I said you know I don't want the first or second year I, I want a 2022 because I know that when cars new models there's always little bugs and usually a couple of years in and get they get all eat. resolved mm -hmm. so I said 2022 I remember that um I remember telling your brother specifically yeah. um, and um he says hey we don't even know if you're gonna get a 2022 it might go into 2023 you're you're like 37 on the list and there's almost no cars available and I'm like whatever that's fine but then, um, two and two and a half weeks after that conversation, you know, I'm supposed to get a call from them. Hey, they, you know, it's your turn online. Now you're supposed to go to the dealer and you're supposed to sit down with them and just finalize, make sure that you're not want to make any changes. Cause I mean, you're custom ordering this thing from wow. the color to the seats, to, to, to engine packages, to the brake. I mean, there's a million things that you can pick and choose on how you want this car to be built. It's kind of tailored just for you. Um, and so, Easter weekend, right? Easter weekend, Easter Good Friday. Good, Good Friday. Friday. Um, is church. that when you? That yes. was when the check for the church yes. donation. The wrap at the for the wrap for the truck yes. cleared her account. Yes, yeah, she says, "Hey, the, the the check for the wrap just cleared the account." I said, "Oh, we were awesome. so excited!" And I was so happy because yeah. I felt like it was one way for us to be part of their outreach, yeah. just because it hit me so hard. Sowing a seed into fertile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. For sure. <laughs> So we were, um, the next, the following day, Saturday, right before Easter, right mm -hmm. before Sunday Easter, I get a call from the dealer <clears throat> and he says, I'll never forget what he said. He goes, Hey, the man up, the man upstairs must really like you. And I go, wow. And in my mind, I'm like, Oh man, they are accepting my build now. Now they're going to start building the car, you know? So, you know, might land around my birthday and I'm thinking to like, you know, God, you know, I still haven't, you know, you still haven't given me the money or the car like how is this going to happen this guy says to me your car is built <laughs> it will be ready for pickup next weekend and i'm like oh, whoa okay and i said well what happened like two and a half weeks ago you said you weren't even sure i was going to get a, the model i wanted the year i wanted he apologized, you know, it was have, God. I, have I received any emails? And I said, what emails? You know, we looked, I've never seen any emails, you know, and, and so we were like, okay, I hang up the phone and, you know, I knew that if we had to purchase this car, you know, we were going to be able to do it, you know, but that wasn't the point. We no, said, I didn't want to buy, I didn't want yeah, to finance it. I'm like, <laughs> me no, neither. if God's going to give you the car. And I, I, I remember looking up and saying, God, with all due respect, you got a week. Because if I don't pick up this car, they will sell it. And that's kind of what they're, I'm assuming that's what they want because they wouldn't we'll sell it. In the a resale market. value will be a lot more. Um, they, they cannot sell over the price of the car when you build a car. But if you decide not to pick it up, they can sell it for whatever they want. Um, and that's what has been happening with this particular car. And I'm looking at the door, I'm like, you have a week. And I'm like, you know, I was a little down in a sense because I'm like, you know, I have so much faith. I mean, I bought parts. Like, what's going on? Like, you got a whole week. Like, it is what it is. 
later that day, um, I'm looking at the, 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 the total price of this car and it was a little off. And I called and I said, hey, what's going on? You know, it's like $2,000 less or something. And I'm like, hey, I got no problem with a better deal, but is something missing? Being that you never even called me back to like do the final layout of the car and all that. And he said, oh, you know, the high wing on the car, which I thought was one of the coolest parts. I mean, that was really like an accessory I really wanted on the car. He said, um, they're not available. Um, they didn't have a wing, so we had to discount that price. And I'm like, man, and I, I kind of, I kind of knew that was coming because of the one of the groups that I follow with this car. These guys, the, you know, pre, the other owners were talking about this. There's no high wings available. They're probably saving them for the future year cars or, you know, they're on back order for a year. He goes, you want me to order it? You know, maybe you get it six months to a year. And I say, hey, might as well order it. You know, I, I to me, that was like one of the focal points of this car. Like I was pretty obsessed on this wing. Um, but I had told... I told your brother, you know, when we, when we first built the car, I said, man, I really, I wanted this wing in white, but they didn't give me an option to, to pick it like that. It was only in black, but I just wanted it in white, you know, for some reason, I just thought it looked better that way. And so anyways, um, late, this is all the same day, Saturday, you know, of Friday, weekend. the check clears for, for the wrap, you know, the donation what the Lord put in our hearts to do. Um, and, uh, that was Friday. And then s Saturday I get a call, the car is ready, ready for pickup. I'm like losing my mind. I'm excited, but I'm like, <laughs> they're a year early. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what, how did that happen? You know, my wife tells me to go check the mail. I don't even pick up the mail. Nine, she always gets the mail. I, I never really bother for the mail. And I'm like, Oh, I'll go, I'll go check the mail. Um, this is me about that probably half an hour after we spoke to the dealer and I go to the mail and there's an envelope. There's two checks in this envelope. This came from the church that we, you know, the big church that we, that the Lord helped us bless through. And then that we were saving them all this, you know, the money on the big job. Um, there were two checks written out to me. This is how you know God listens to you. My daughter always prays, and we never taught her how to pray or tell her exactly what to say. We've taught her, but we never taught And she always says, God, <laughs> give us the things that we need and give us some of the things that we want. And I always like thought about that. I'm like, man, that's really good. These checks did not just equal like close to what the car cost. When I, when I added them together, they were exactly, not to the dollar, to the penny. I mean, to the penny, like how do you, how do you even, what my car cost the same day? I'm like, I'm like stuck. I can't even, I don't even know what to say. And I'm like, someone sent us a check from the church. Two checks written to me. Nobody knows the number of this car. No one other than myself, my wife and the dealer. And he doesn't even go to church because we ministered to him. <laughs> and now he's going to come to our church. We walked into that dealer and we paid for this car in full. The Lord provided something that I didn't need, but that I really wanted. He even gave you the wing. And to put the cherry on top, the dealer calls me back. This is all in the same day. And he says, hey, I found the wing for you in Tampa. Some guy custom ordered a wing, but there, he says, there's one issue. God does not miss the details. Nope. He says... The wing is in white. Which is what you wanted. And I just looked up and I just kind of laughed a little bit. And I'm like, gosh, you're just too, too good. You're just, he gave me everything. I mean, to the, to the details of it. And we, he, I walked in and just 
we paid for this car in full and drove <laughs> drove out. In and, complete awe. Yeah. And I'll never forget, I got home and I went in my prayer room and I told God, I said, God, you gave me this car, but I don't want it for free. So I just continued to, to ask the Lord just to send me people, assignments, whatever it is, because I wanted to, I just want to repay whatever he's done. I know I can never pay him back for what he's done for me, but in soul winning, um, I really believe that the business that we have is not a business just for us to have finances and stuff. It's, it's, I almost look at it more like a ministry now mm -hmm. because every job that we do, every job, there's always something. There's a reason that I go, wow, this is why we came here. Whether the Lord ministers to, to our clients or to our, or to ourselves or even to our guys as, as that happened in the past. Um, but, um, what I love to say is just that when you surrender yourself wholeheartedly to the Lord and you just, you just learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the doors of heaven will open over your life. Like things I've never imagined. Um, and, and it just comes by just trusting God and, and, and being obedient. Yeah, obedience, you know, and, and faith. I learned, you know, everybody would say, oh, faith, faith comes with action. And I didn't even think about it until I started thinking to myself, you know, I bought those, <laughs> those things. I've had those parts sitting in the garage for years, and I would look at these things. And I said, one day I'll be able to put it, put, put that on the car and whatnot. And and for me, that was the action. And, um, but the main action was was the Lord. Um so this wasn't a testimony or any kind of story about a car. It was, it was more about being obedient, giving yourself to the Lord, having 100% faith. And what hit me the most and why I cried so much about this was because I realized I serve a God that loves me so much that I, I, it was, I could compare it to when my daughters asked for something that I will do anything in my power to give it to them. And he's the same thing, he's done the same, he treats me the same way no matter how, no matter how much I don't deserve it because I really don't deserve any of this. And, and that's just the beauty of it. Um, so I just, I just thank God, I thank Jesus for, for what he's doing in our lives, through our business. And we just hope that this motivates you anybody who's who gets to listen to this and and just you know just just know that if you put your trust in the lord your faith in the lord and you give him everything that you have he will bless you with not just the things that you want but the things that you need the things that you don't need things that you dream about yeah he'll make every dream come true as long as your heart is in the right place mm -hmm. What I love so much about your testimony, Ray, is, or our testimony, is just seeing that if you have a fully surrendered heart to the Lord, and I've seen you since you were 16 years old, allow God to mold you into the man that he wants you to be. And as much as I would have needed to take that, or wanted to fulfill that leadership role, I knew that it needed to come from you as the head of our house to see that you wholeheartedly surrender to the Lord, that he would give you the desires of your heart once you put him first. We could be obedient and we could do it as a family, but it needed to come from you first. So I love you and I'm so glad I that you had a chance to share your testimony with everyone. I hope that, I have no doubt that it'll minister to a lot of people. Let's go for a ride. <laughs>